I was reading through some comments the other day and there was a comment that was talking about how I talk way too much about how difficult men pins are and that pretty much men pins aren't difficult dogs, you know. So then I started thinking, what am I doing to this channel? How, how could I lead these people astray if I'm talking about difficulty so much? And I thought, nah, we do us, right? So today's video, we're gonna talk about some mistakes that I made with my men pins. Let's get to it. So first mistake that I'm gonna talk about is allowing them to sleep in my bed. Now, it's very hotly debated on whether this is something that should be allowed for your puppy or your adult men pin, but I consider for myself that it was a mistake. Now, if you can imagine, bringing home our first puppy. We were super excited and we said, oh, we're gonna cuddle with them and we're gonna do all this and that and we decided to bring them in the bed. And for a little while we thought it was okay, but after a little bit, he got a little bit bigger. And while they're not big dogs, they can take up a lot of room. So from there, we decided that we needed to get them out of the bed. And once they're in the bed, let's just say it's a lot more difficult to get them out. Think a whole lot about what you're gonna do when you bring them home. Now for one, I definitely recommend that you should be crate training them from the beginning, for one. So bring them into the bed and not crate training from the beginning is gonna make it harder to do the crate training. It's gonna also make it harder to potty train them. If later on you wanna move them out of the bed, they're already gonna think that they're the king or queen of the bed at that point, and so it's gonna be super difficult. See, see the difficult thing again. Make sure that you make that decision and you know what you're getting into. Now, I don't like them in our bed, partly because they're dirty, to be honest. And also, like I said, training them and kind of getting in their own bed and getting them to understand that is very difficult when you allow them on their bed or even allow them on the couch. So like I said, now we allow ours on our couch. You know, he no longer sleeps on our bed, uh, but they do, they are allowed on our couches. But something to consider and something definitely in that first six months of life um, if you really stress that and you really train to that you should have no problem making that a lifelong habit of them staying off the couch or staying off the bed or whatever you want them to do so definitely i would say a mistake of mine was just letting them to bed really without a plan was the mistake i made in that one okay the second mistake i want to talk about here was proper or i guess lack of proper socialization now this really extended out to different things of not getting socialized i would say with enough dogs that they didn't live with now way back when um, we lived in a small apartment and basically you know had very little money and so we would visit and hang out over at my uh, in-laws house and there they had other dogs and so they would get to know them and then we even ended up staying with them for a little bit um, while I was, you know, going to my next uh, career choice. From there, that's all the, you know, we didn't do a good job all the time of getting them out and proper socializing them with other animals, a lot of other people, and also this kind of messed up with us having to deal with them with barking, and when people came to the door, they didn't really trust them and different things like that. So definitely, once again, kind of with the first thing, doing that early on definitely makes it a lot easier. Um, you can do test runs. You know that's really the best way to train to this of them barking and maybe jumping up on people at at your home is try to have people come into your house and basically just practice it and even let people know when you're coming in. Hey, I'm training my puppy or I'm training my dog to not jump up or not to bark. Uh, so please do your best just to ignore them when you walk in. Don't come up and talk. Should I talk to them? That's usually the problem, right? Is you want to train them to do this, but then people walk inside and they see the dog and they want to talk to the dog and everything of that nature. Uh, so when you're going through that training phase and just let them know before they come in, shoot them a text or something. I'm training my puppy right now. Please take these actions. And most people are going to oblige and do what you say. If not, I guess you don't have to let them inside your house if you don't want to. But the main point is, is let them know, work together, and before too long, you won't have that issue at least as much. Men pins tend to be yappy, if you haven't noticed already, a little bit. But they can definitely be trained to reduce that down or completely eliminate, depending on how dedicated you are to getting that trained and getting them the way that you want them. The next mistake I would say that we made was whenever we had a puppy and we brought him home, we definitely didn't introduce him to the like button. 
That's right. So the like button is located here, down a little bit below there, and definitely introduce yourself and your MinPin friend to the like button right now. It's completely free, and it's definitely a, a mistake you don't want to make by not hitting that like button. So go ahead and hit that like button, and we can go on to the next mistake here. Okay, the third mistake I wanted to talk about that I had with Blitz is the lack of manners. I mean, there's no other way to put it. I didn't really instill him proper manners. And by proper manners, I mean I didn't really give him the proper training to be able to not bother us at dinner time, to not s scrap for food or beg for food. And a lot of that was from when they were younger, he would just, you know, we fed him table scraps as needed, or they were just after our kids, which is very difficult. So if you have children, um, they never really attacked our kids or anything like in a vicious way but they were always looking for when they had food in their hand or anything of that nature. And definitely something, once again, we're gonna keep going back to it here. We didn't take care of it when they were younger and definitely it is a lot difficult. And while the whole old saying of you can't teach a dog new tricks, I don't necessarily believe, it does take more time to break habits that have been instilled in dogs just like it does in humans, right? So make sure that you establish those manners up front once again establish what you need to be done so whatever rules that you want to discuss this discuss this before you ever get the puppy that's the the big deal if you discuss if you you know have a spouse or significant other or roommates or if you're just by yourself have a plan up front what are we going to allow what are we not going to allow that's another thing is you can't confuse the min pen if you're not going to be feeding at the table but someone else is that's going to be a problem or vice versa so definitely make sure that you're on the same plan and that you don't make these mistakes like Nate did, okay? So I didn't want to just leave you here with just a couple of mistakes and just leave you at the door there. So I want to talk about one thing that we did very well that you need to make sure you're doing, and that is our proper puppy handling. So I've talked about that on this channel before, but I wanted to emphasize that proper puppy handling and teaching them to be handled is going to help out very much. Now Blitz, he was alive and he was in our household before my first child was ever born for about two years now in that two years time we did a lot with him and made sure um, through you know reinforcement that he would not be nipping at us and part of that was we never accepted any puppy biting um, we never accepted any type of rough play to that nature so without any type of device that he's playing with versus like our hands and that actually definitely helped because when my son Cooper was born and he was going around and messing with his ears or all up in his grill, at that point Blitz understood that I'm not to bite this one. Now, it doesn't mean that we allowed Cooper to go do that free will, but, I mean, a one-year-old sometimes not the easiest to control. So that's continued, and even through all the way, you know, all of our kids up to my newest child that we have now, Blitz is still around, older and everything, and still accepts them and understands his role in the household. So definitely make sure you get that puppy handling and you do your best to show them positive reinforcement that basically what is right and what is wrong. And if nothing else, these other things need to be trained, but not having them bite because you don't want them to bite a neighbor, you don't want them to bite your own kids, you don't want them to bite you. So I think that's one of the most important things you need to do is that puppy handling. So take note of all these mistakes we talked about here, but definitely don't forget this success right here. So if you're looking for more mistakes, make sure that you go check out our puppy potty training mistake video that we did talking about the mistakes you want to avoid when you're potty training your puppy min pin. That is a lot to say. So check that video out over here, and we will see you over in that video.